Okay, so G2 just made a massive roster announcement, and the result is Siege's first bonafide super team. Fabian is out, Virtue and Citizen are in, and what was once the most strategic squad in Siege has since become a group of full flex fraggers. Here's the thing though, everybody's on Twitter, Reddit, freaking out about whether these guys are gonna live up to the G2 name, and I only have one question, who the hell is gonna play Thermite? Okay, so what is it that makes this probably the single most momentous roster move in the history of Siege? Well, for that, we need context. Thankfully, my dear friend Keith, Mr. TMZ himself, has decided to take a day off from streamer news and let me bless y'all with some esports talk. Before we go any further, I just want to let you guys know, if you are at all interested in seeing more Don't At Me's about edgy e-gamer topics like Rainbow Six, subscribe to the channel. Also, like the video and let us know in the comments what R6 topics you think we should be covering. Now, if you know anything about Siege, you know that G2 are, in the immortal words of Intero, the best team that has ever played Rainbow Six. He needs to get into the site and keep in mind, in a 4v1, they are the best team that has ever played Rainbow Six and the first team to repeat as defending reigning world champions. The problem is that over the last year or so, they really struggled to perform. They didn't make it to two consecutive Pro League Finals, they fell short at the Raleigh Major, and failed to qualify for the Invitational five fucking times. So as a result, they've been shuffling their roster around a lot. So by the time Ubisoft got around to giving them a pity invite to the 2020 Invitational, since by their lights, Fabian and the boys still deserved a chance to defend their title, the community was pretty convinced that G2 were washed. I don't want to get invited, sir. Getting invited is bullshit. Five seconds it's like, oh, you're so bad you couldn't qualify? Here's an invitation, dude. I have too much honor. Like, like, I don't think we should be there. The thing is, against every expectation, they actually put up a pretty respectable result. They topped their group, and even though they didn't make it very far in playoffs, they showed the world that Fabian still had some cheeky-ass strats up his sleeve. See, it's a Chanka pick from nah. Uno there. I think that's nah. just a little bit of a jibbit. Nah, he's locked it sure. in. We're surely going to see. Nah. <laughs> okay, we're going to see a Chanka strat, Des. The crazy thing is that just a few weeks after invite, it was announced that Fabian, the mastermind behind all of G2's dynastic success, had been benched. The even crazier thing is that apparently he asked to be benched. We'll get to that. For now, let's talk about G2. Now, you think that in losing Fabian, G2 would be looking for a new in-game leader. Someone to fill the shoes of the self-titled best player in the world. But to everyone's surprise, they didn't want a strategist. They wanted a fucking legion of Ash mains. Now, whether it's because they couldn't find someone to fill Fabian's shoes, or because they didn't even bother to try, G2 enlisted the help of pretty much the two most individually talented fraggers in the world who aren't already playing for top tier rosters. The first is Virtue, an up-and-coming Australian aim god who G2 nabbed from Fnatic, the team to knock G2 out of the upper bracket at SI. The second was Citizen. Now, next to Shiko, Citizen is pretty much the most mechanically terrifying player in the whole of Europe. He helped Na'Vi secure a Pro League Championship back in November, and has apparently spent like every waking second of his career dreaming of joining G2. Now, to be clear, it is not surprising that G2 were able to nab star players at a moment's notice. They're like the Yankees of Siege. They wait until other teams breed and nurture top-tier talent before swooping in and stealing it for themselves. What was surprising is that they decided to go the fragger route, to go from basically the most big-brained roster ever to a shamelessly stacked super team. And in typical G2 fashion, they couldn't help but meme on themselves a little bit. No supports, no plans, no bullshit, only frags. The question, of course, is whether they'll be able to succeed on skill alone. Whether they'll soar to the top, or like so many other super teams, I'm thinking Team Secret at TI5, or FaZe Clan literally at any point ever, crash and burn. That said, there is reason to think that a frag-heavy roster could do extremely well in the current climate of competitive Siege. Look at TSM, for instance. You've got Bolo, Achieved, Merc, and Geo, four of the dankest GN dishers in all of NA, and Pojo, who's, you know, their babysitting support. The second one will find him. That's a frag onto the back of Pino from Bolo. In the line of sight of that LMG. Another for Bolo, down goes Julio, and TSM seemingly 
have been able to start catching the breaks as it's a 1v4 and a 0v4 map number one. TSM routinely fail to get walls open, dry peak everything, and somehow finished third at invite. Similar to how CSGO shifted towards a more frag flex heavy meta in and around 2015, it is starting to feel as if Siege is becoming more and more of a fragger's paradise. They want to play that way because it looks good. The problem is that that causes a lot of frustration both for the player doing it and the player receiving it. it like it really pays off quickly if you get away with it. And it feels good when you do. And then you can put a clip up, you can, you know, you're the hero of the day if you got that 3K rushing into sight. And while it is difficult to imagine putting all of this star power on one roster and have them do anything but shit excellence, it is impossible to overstate how huge the expectations are around this team. Whether they'll be able to live up to them, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. As for Fabian, his departure from G2 marks the end of an era. The greatest reign of tyranny that Siege has ever known. And his split from Pengu is probably the most monumental roster move ever. Still, in spite of what the Reddit analysts would have you believe, Fabian is far from finished. Take it from me, someone who looked into his eyes in Montreal and asked him about his future, this guy is on one. He told me that he would never, ever stop trying to become the best, and I believed him. You don't even have to finish that question for me to answer it. I will never lose my motivation to be the best. I believe in myself. I wouldn't be here if I didn't think that I was the best. It doesn't matter what I think when I go on stage. If I think that I'm not the best guy when I go into a duel, I'm not going to win it. In terms of why he left, uh, it's hard to say. Apparently, it's because the team dynamic wasn't so great following their loss at Invite. And naturally, the community has already started to speculate as to where he's going to end up. He said he'll consider leaving Europe if the offer is spicy enough, and I, for one, am hoping that he becomes the first major European player to migrate over to North America. If we're going full eyes emoji, I'm thinking evil geniuses. That said, as of right now, there's no indication that even Fabian knows where he's gonna end up, since his initial plans seem to have actually fallen through. So until we actually hear something, and until we get to see G2 play, there's not much else to say. When I know more, so will you. How many good nights do I give out a night? Quite a few, quite a few. <laughs> Honest. Quite a few, yeah. It's cause, it's cause I play smoke though, so I, I'm an SMG 11 main. So uh, I spawn peek with the SMG 11, and whenever I spawn peek with the SMG 11, I always toss an all chat GN. But the SMG 11 is, is the best gun in the game, and it's like highly, it's very hard to use, very, 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 very unstable recoil. But if you, I'm like, I have like a religious obsession with the weapon, like I'm a disciple of the SMG 11, and it's the only gun I use. Only, I play sledge on attack, so I can just use the SMG 11.